Welcome to Juris Dictum. I'm Katie Enright, here with Carissa Murphy, and this is part two of our interview with Dean Maureen Lally Green. So do you believe that having gone to Duquesne as a law student, that you have a unique insight into the student body? I think being an alum is great help. I just, I get what the spirit and mission is about. Uh, it's been with me since 1967. I, I, I get the mission of the law school. And that's just been part of my, my growth professionally and certainly personally. The focus on academic excellence, it's always been here. The focus on ethics and professionalism, that has been a constant and has served certainly all the people I know who are alums extremely well out in, in the practice. Uh, that you don't operate in the gray zone. You operate ethically and professionally all the time. And with respect. And the, the respect part comes from the spirit because the mission is about service. Serving students here so they may serve others. Whether it's their clients, their immediate community, the national or international community. We do have that aspect of us, of service, which means it's not always about us. So being an alum, as, as I say to my, even my kids, I get that, you know, and, and it's just more now uh, about how to create the opportunities. Do you have any tips for students, um, specifically those who might be looking to do corporate work? Surely. There is in the, uh, I have a lot of corporate experience too. I worked for Westinghouse. Uh, for a number of years, six years, in their corporate law department. And then um, I do have some lots of not-for-profit board experience and some for-profit board experience. And I would say that the same things we talk about here are the things we visit in the corporate world. Excellence in the work you do. Just excellence. You know, being tenacious about understanding things. Never dropping the ball, never kind of giving up on being completely educated about what you need to do. A tremendous, a tremendous um, emphasis on ethics and professionalism. It might be under the word uh, compliance. It might be under the word governance. It might be risk management. But it's all about ethics. It's all about professionalism, doing the right thing right the first time. And service. In the corporate world, one, it's not about oneself. It's about serving your client, which is the corporation, and doing the best job you can do, whatever that job happens to be. And the the most successful people in the corporate life are those that take the job they're given and do a fabulous job and are able just to adapt when the need is there and cooperative and, um, I use the word serve, but get the job done because that's what it's about, no matter where one goes. But we as lawyers, I think, have a special role in not only our professional lives in terms of our work, but in our community lives. People expect us to be able to assist them in solving problems or managing conflict or managing issues. And we take the skills we've learned in school or even in our work life, into all parts of our life. But we still bring those skills of professionalism, ethics, uh, respect for others, honesty, integrity, and I say a healthy dose of mercy and kindness. We're capable of doing that just because of the way we've been trained. So in recent years, the job market for students coming right out of law school hasn't been so great. Um, do you have any plans to make Duquesne more attractive to potential students and graduates more competitive in the job market? Well, we have begun the process here of looking at the jobs that exist out there and seeing how we serve students in getting those jobs. I have to first give a great round of applause to Maria Comas and to Samantha Coyne for the work they are doing in opening the vistas to all of you and getting some personal relationship built with law firms in the corporate world. Uh, these are invaluable. Just even a handshake and someone who remembers your name can be invaluable. 
But on a deeper level, we look at the opportunities in the public service arena and the opportunities in the private arena. The public service arena can be executive, the governor's office, the executive agencies, the uh, legislative arena with the different uh, representative uh, capacities, the elected capacities, and working for the, on the staffs of these people, uh, both statewide, local. We have a lot of people involved in a lot of those things in the public service arena here. And whether the job opportunity can be matched with the connection, well, it's sure, sure something we're looking at. Uh, we have Governor Corbett here, which is exciting. We have John Rago, Joe Mystic, working really hard with the governor and uh, working sincerely in the public service arena. And then we have our wonderful clinics. So I think some of those opportunities there will be very helpful. And working with the court system will be very helpful in getting some of the, these jobs. In that regard, externships. Externships when I was on the bench, having students come and working with me. I might not have had a job that I could offer, but I have colleagues who look for people to to uh, serve in capacities, and they would often call me, do you have someone that you can send up that you think is good? So I really encourage students to take these externships, particularly with the judges, uh, just a great opportunity to network at a minimum, uh, have someone appreciate who you are, but these will be colleagues in a very short year, these people that you work with. On the corporate side, we're really we're really uh, beginning stages, but we're looking at um, having a focused opportunity in maybe it's a master's of law where you take after you graduate. Maybe it is uh, a few extra courses here. Maybe there's some way to connect both. We're not sure yet, but a focus since we're in a corporate community here and in a very uh, established, well-regarded corporate community with incredible corporations, there's opportunity there. We want to make sure that you have those the skills that make you attractive there. What do you think the future of Duquesne Law should look like? I think there has been a terrific improvement in so many things. Not that anything was bad, but a, a great, thoughtful, frankly wise way we've dealt with challenges always staying true to our mission. I think that that is um, the thing that rings true as a constant. A great credit to all the work that our current president Gorman did because he weathered through eight years of, of some tough times that other law schools have not weathered through so well. I think our greatest hope is our students and our alums because you see what they do in the real world and you see they carry on what they've learned here in their hearts and they act that way. That's who they are. So I think the hope, I think the, um, the future is very bright and it's very bright because people are committed to this place. So are we and we appreciate your commitment to this thank place. You. So thank, thank, thank you. you so much for You're sitting down with us. You're quite welcome. Thank you for tuning in with Jurisdictum. Catch other podcast interviews online at jurismagazine.com.